Hey guys, how you doing? So with The Mandalorian Season 3 coming up, we've gotten, of course, over the last few days, more and more uh, pictures. We've gotten all sorts of promo for it. We got the new posters that they uploaded to their Instagram and all those social medias. So we'll first start with this one, and it is a picture of the gang that seems to be causing trouble for Navarro 7. If you didn't remember, Navarro 7 is the planet that Grief Karga is now in charge of, and it was also the planet that a lot of things took place in in season one as well as season two so it's a pretty important planet and now now it appears this gang is causing issues for him and this might be why grief cargo would like the mando to stick around because he knows that he will be a big help in dealing with these criminals there's a few things that are interesting to point out i mean you've got over here in the far right you've got a quarren this appears to be the leader and he is a nikto there's also another nikto here and then there is a Trandoshan. We've been seeing a lot of Trandoshans recently in Star Wars. Obviously, in the Bad Batch, we saw the tribe episode where the Trandoshans were attacking the Wookiee village on behalf of the Empire. But we know that Trandoshans and Wookiees don't get along. So I'm sure that the Trandoshans were happy to help the Empire in this. We also see, of course, Sid, who is the primary uh, employer of the Bad Batch is a Trandoshan as well. And then in the far left, we see a Weequa. And I think this is interesting because if you didn't know, Hondo Onaka, the, the infamous pirate from the Clone Wars and even shows up in Rebels, is a Weequa. Now, I don't think that this is Hondo Onaka at all. I think if we were going to see Hondo Onaka, they would make sure we know it's Hondo Onaka. Uh, I think he would even be dressed similar to this Nikto guy here. Um, this just this just isn't him, but it is cool to think about the possibility of how could we see Hondo Onaka? Perhaps he is part of this criminal gang. Perhaps this is actually his gang, and maybe this Nikto in the middle is his second in command or something like that. That could be fun. It'd be really interesting to see the Mando and uh, Hondo Onaka interact with each other. I think that Mando would just find him very annoying. So this is the second image that I pulled, and I really like this one. I mean, it's a it's a Mandalorian blasting out of an explosion. How cool is that? But what's interesting is that this is a Mandalorian we haven't seen yet. We can tell by this white pinstripe on his helmet, and the important thing is the Death Watch logo here on his, yeah, his left shoulder. Now, if you didn't remember, Death Watch is the Mandalorian sect that during the time of the Clone Wars, they rebelled against Duchess Satine because of her pacifist choices. They, they believed that Mandalore was a warrior culture, and they're right. So they wanted to get back to that warrior culture. They saw Duchess Satine as the roadblock to their heritage, to their traditional Mandalorian culture. And ultimately, she's overthrown. Um, Duchess Satine is also the uh, sister of Bo-Katan, if you didn't remember that. But Death Watch is also the Mandalorian sect that rescues Din Djarin when he is a foundling. So I think that it'll be cool to see what they do with Death Watch in season three. I think that we've kind of gotten some little brief cameos throughout the Mandalorian, but we haven't had any like real update on what is going on with Death Watch specifically. So I think that that could be a cool dynamic to unpack. Now, just in case you were, you were confused, so Bo-Katan was part of Death Watch or working with Death Watch during the, the rebellion during the Clone Wars, but in by the time of the Mandal by the time of the Mandalorian, she's actually part of her own uh, group of Mandalorians called the Night Owls. And they have a similar color scheme and stuff, but they're they're different than the Death Watch. So I'm excited. I'm excited as we get closer. We're less than a week away from the Mandalorian season three. I'm gonna probably be doing some watch parties. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Either way, I'm gonna be staying up late to watch the Mandalorian, get those breakdowns done. And I hope that as a community, we can have some fun discussion, theorizing and talking about the Mandalorian. I think that for me, without a doubt, season two of The Mandalorian was my favorite thing that Disney has done since they've owned Star Wars, maybe with the exception of Tales of the Jedi. But I just I'm halfway through my season two rewatch and I forgot that the first episode of The Mandalorian starts with a battle against a crate dragon where villagers team up with Tusken Raiders and there is the confirmation that Boba Fett survived. Like all of that happened in the first episode of season two. So I really do have high expectations for season three, but man, it's just 
a ton of exciting things happen in season two, and I have no doubts that season three will rise to the occasion. Now, the runtime of the first episode is a little bit disappointing. I think it's like 35 minutes long. I hope that that's not the precedent for the rest of the season, but either way, The Mandalorian is still something that I'm trusting is going to be a really awesome Star Wars experience. So I'll catch you in the next video. Leave a like on your way out if you haven't already, and may the force be with you.